All right, first up is the, the stove. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to have the stove come out and be able to, I want to have a little table that folds down. And so I want the stove to be able to cook down here, which is a little bit lower than the countertop. And in addition to that, I'll have this window right here for it to ventilate. And then I'll design some kind of fan system to, to blow out uh, the, the steam and things like that when I'm cooking and the smell. So what I bought for that is this this table mount uh, from Amazon and you can see from the pictures it's actually made for the table to fold up but I, I don't want the table to fold up because I don't want it to dangle and take out space but so I rather I fold I rather the table fold down so that it could sit while it's up and then fold down like this. So I'm going to use this mount, kind of reverse of what uh, it was intended for. But I think if I use um, some bolts instead of screws, it's going to be fine. Okay, so I'm using more uh, reclaimed wood from my previous build, from the previous cabin. I just cut up this piece. And the idea is that I'm going to have it hang like this in normal uh, operation. And then it'll fold down like that. Um, when I want to use it as a table or use it as my stove top. Um, what I don't want to do is I don't want to have legs down here and because I, I just don't want that space to be used. I want to be able to get in and out of that space. So I want to use this that bracket to make it hang. All right, so I got this in and uh, I think it looks pretty good. So what I did was I reverse mounted it upside down and it has these levers. So it won't go up by itself. You have to push those in, put it back. So one one drawback of this kit was that it came with these little screws, and you can see it, it's a little bit short for the type of you know, weight that I want to put on it. So what I did was I reinforced it. Well, reinforced, but I I swapped out the these for for some nuts and bolts for the the high torque spots this spot this spot these two spots of course and up here I put in a, a big a big screw much bigger than this fatter much bigger than this guy fatter and longer so uh, I think it, it'll be strong enough to hold for the lesser torque holes I just used the original screws and I think those will be fine Okay, so let's try out the grill. So my plan is to, to not the grill, the stove. But my plan is to keep the stove in here and it fits nice and neatly in there. So this is just a basic camping stove. It's, it's nothing fancy. It's one of those butane ones. My plan is to put it right there. Oh shoot, <laughs> it does fit perfectly. I forgot to measure the distance between these two latches, um, but I just got lucky that they do fit. Um, I probably won't push it up against there anyway because you know I don't want to get too close to the wood. I'll probably keep it out here. Uh, I'll keep the pot here, and then now we're going to need to do some kind of fan system to try to blow, ventilate and blow blow out all the steam. Here's my stove at a couple of different angle shots. As you can see, there's space below the, the table on the, on, for the stove. So it's, there's still plenty of room for me to move around. Okay, so um, I was planning on having a, a, a hard mounted fan that I just have put it on a hinge and I could wrap around and have it all the ventilation blow outside. And, uh, and what, what I wanted to do on this build, uh, different from my previous builds, is, you know, I, I did a lot of hard wiring on my previous builds and this time I just think uh, maybe just going battery, just rechargeable battery is the way to go. So that's what I'm going to do in this scenario. So I have this little fan, this little handheld USB chart rechargeable fan and I'm going to use this as the ventilation. And I think it's going to be alright. I'm going to put it right here, turn it on, put it right there. And I think that's going to take care of all the ventilation we need. So let's uh, boil some water and see where the steam goes and check it out. Let's close the windows. All right, so I have all the windows closed so that uh, we can see where the steam goes. And I'm not sure if you can see in the video, it, it actually is working out pretty well. The steam is coming out of the pot and it's wrapping around and being blown out. I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up. Let's see if it's a different angle, but it seems like it's doing a good job. And if I 
turn it out, that'll be even even better. So I think this is going to work out well. All right, so now that the, the stove is all squared away and I have this nice handy dandy table that comes out, it actually works works well as a little table too when you, when you need a little extra table space. But uh, I want to move on to the sink now. And what I'm going to use is this little lunch, silicon lunch thing that I, I actually bought for camping, but after a while I just didn't want to use it. I, I just thought uh, using uh, something, using stainless steel metal plates were a better option so i never even used these so silicon containers and what they do is they pop out so i'm going to use this in, to design a sink out of this and the reason is i want it when i'm not using it as a sink i want it to be as compact as possible and you can see it's not very thick and i want to use what i learned in the the second build about uh, using my drainage over here uh, that's underneath my car and then my gray water tank and what I want to do is let me show you so I have the drainage right here and you remember that pipe that I used for drainage I want to be able to just use it and I want to build the sink on the inside of this cabinet like probably like this and I want to be able to smash it down fold it up and then close it so when I'm not using the sink it's it's nice and compact and stored away again I want to reuse as much as I can so I'm taking the old sink and taking the drainage from the old sink to build the new one so I got the frame cut out and I cut a little notch for where the magnet would go now I need to cut it so that it fits the silicon sink so I cut the straight parts with a small circular saw and after that I was able to take a jigsaw to do the edges. All right, so I got that cut out and let's see if it's a good fit. Oops, <laughs> move the camera. Yeah, it seems like a good fit trying to do this with one hand. So you see, and then I'm gonna mount this inside the door. And I had to do this little notch because I need to account for the magnet of the cabinet. Looks good. All right, I got the, the drainage in. I think it looks really good. The nice thing about uh, Having silicon, I don't really have to cock it because I just need to screw it in real tight, and the silicon itself provides a water seal, uh, water seal thing. <laughs> All right, I got it in. Let's show you what it's going to look like. It's going to look like that. I have a little Velcro here to hold it in when when it's driving and it's in place. Seems to fit pretty nicely. I'll demo to you guys how to, how it works. Okay. All right, so I'll demo to you guys how this works. The idea is that uh, the sink is out of the way when I don't want to use it. I open this up, I pull that down, and I have this collapsible sink that I, you guys saw that I made. I'm going to put it in here. I'm gonna have the drainage pipe. I'll stick it in there. And there you have your, my sink. I'm going to take a look at it a little bit closer. Yeah, you're not going to wash dishes in this sink, but it, you'll do exactly what I uh, intended to do, and that's basically to brush your teeth and for my kids to put on their contact lenses. And when you're all done, you just collapse everything up, put it in there. Just like that. There's that. Put this in there. And that's it. Okay, so uh, you guys, uh, you saw my sink already, and I want to demo. You know, in the past, I had a little faucet, a little hand crank faucet, and then I had a little hand pump faucet uh, for the water, but. I decided I just don't need that much water and most of the water I have it's in water bottles that I use to drink to brush my teeth and to wash my hands too just because I don't use a lot of it um, but so what I want to do and of course I could just pour in water like this 
and, and it goes down no problem but I bought this little nozzle right here you could see uh, from Amazon and I'll leave a link on it for you you just screw it on and it's really handy and, and it just you're able to control how much water by how much you squeeze if you want to open up the the air valve you could just pour it'll pour better but it's better to, I, I find it better just to leave it closed and just squeeze as you go along and if you haven't seen my drainage video yet uh, you could check out the link above and you could see what the drainage looks like the gray water tank but I'll, I'll give you a quick look outside to see what the drainage tank looks like so looking from the outside it goes straight down and we're gonna go underneath the car and then you're gonna see there is my gray water tank and again if uh, you haven't seen how I did this you can look at a previous video that I have linked above and to see how I did that. A micro stove and a micro sink to go with a micro camper.